I am totally delighted to be here, first of all, because um, I feel very blessed. I have found my life passion, and it is all about supporting innovative ideas like Marco described what was just shown and others, I'll tell you other examples, and being able to help the financing and the mentoring that goes with creating that. Um, secondly, I just love when we meet individuals and we can say, you know, what is your passion as opposed to what you do? And, and so it's real, I feel, thank you very much for making this um, happen in, in Malta. I feel very grateful to be here. So a couple of examples um, of, of when I've, I've been uh, a business angel. Uh, it's not just high tech, even though definitely as, as the last two um, presentations were made, I was thinking, okay, are they looking for financing? Where could I value? Who could I connect them with? How could we get this to be really global? Uh, and, and certainly, uh, some of the investments we do are very much high-tech, often a spin-out of a university. For example, we have one um, that right now can create micro-projectors that are the size of a nail, and that's becoming very, very important, for example, in the automotive industry, um, so that you can, on your dashboard, actually see the speed, etc. You don't have to look down. It can also be, it's going to be very soon, probably, uh, be used in mobile phones because there's more and more of a need to once you want to project something that it needs to be a high quality A4 auto um, uh, auto focused and very low energy power usage in, in a phone. And so that was a spin out. Uh, it now has about 20 patents and we are very much involved in giving our own money, because we're private investors to finance that, but also, as I mentioned, to help them grow. We also uh, very much do impact investing. So we look for entrepreneurs who have um, an aspect of profitability, but who are really looking to address um, big challenges in the world, social and environmental, or how they're building their business lifts the values of the future, which we feel need to take into account social and environment impact, not just about making short-term profit and within just the company. So examples of that, we're just about to finish um, investing in Barefoot, called Barefoot Power. So providing, it's already provided a million families um, in developing countries the ability to go from kerosene to solar um, generated little lamps first for studying and for recharging phones because phones in all those countries is fundamental and then can actually develop off-grid electricity um, for many of those villages. Uh, we also do things in, um, in education. Uh, we do things, we have just invested in a grass insulation uh, company that's insulation for homes based on, on grass. And uh, so we go from very low-tech to high-tech. So who's, who are we? We tend to be, the typical is an entrepreneur who has sold their business and now says, I want to give back. And I also, maybe as I'm investing, will be able to help the entrepreneur, but maybe one day we'll actually go and join one of the entrepreneurs and this will be my new venture. But more and more, and especially in Europe, we have active individuals, professionals, executives, business owners, who say, wow, actually either this could be interesting ideas for my business, or one day I want to be an entrepreneur, but what I've chosen right now to be more in the corporate world or to be working for, for a professional firm, but one day I know I want to be an entrepreneur. What better way to find out about entrepreneurship and have a finger in entrepreneurship um, than being an investor? And the third is in transition. Uh, I am a I'm, I, I love diversity in all types, um, including gender diversity. And, and what's very sad is that there's a lot of now very educated women um, who for very good reasons decide to take some time off during the childbearing years, but a lot of times once they're out, it is almost impossible for them to go back on ramps to go back in the working environment. 
Working with entrepreneurs, being a business angel, is a fantastic way in that transition period. And my angel network, which is called Go Beyond, where I think the one in the world who has the most women, except for ones who are only women, and we're about over a third of our investors um, are, are women. So in transition, and many of us go through transition periods throughout our lives, those are the types of people who do that. The next big question is, well, how much money do you need? You must need to have at least hundreds of thousands of euros a year. In my angel network, we purposely created a way that we can be a business angel with 10,000 euros. Now, sure, it should not be more than 2 to 10% of your net wealth. This is high risk. It is very high reward, but we can lose it all. Um, so, but there are ways of contributing to entrepreneurship with as little, well, little, 10,000 is a lot, but compared to the myth, you can start. Also, people say, I have no time. Uh, as soon as you invest in groups, and that's how most people do it, even a couple of hours a month is enough. And that entrepreneur, it's not that you're there all the time, but if they need a contact somewhere, if they're facing a big decision, being able to just give you a call and say, listen, what do I do next? That's, that's enough. So it's a bit like child rearing. It's not the amount of time, uh, but it's the quality of the time that you have with the entrepreneur. How much do we invest? Um, we invest usually anywhere between um, 100,000, 50, 100,000 euros to a couple million. After that usually becomes professional investment uh, firms or funds. And um, now, a lot of questions are, well, do you invest right at the beginning? I have this great idea. No. We really do come in when there's already, as we saw some examples, something that is working. Uh, a prototype doesn't have to be yet the industrialization, but there's something and the first pilot clients. We are actually the best at helping the entrepreneurs figuring out what really will be the, the business model and what will it take to really take this to much bigger than, than where it is? The other reason we don't come too early is we really want to stay minority shareholders. We do take a share of the entrepreneur's company as opposed to a loan. Sometimes it can be convertible, but since it's high risk, we would like to say, we will take the risk with you. We're not going to say, start repaying us. But at the same time, if it works, we would like to share the reward with you. And we really prefer to own anywhere between 20, 30 percent. So the entrepreneurs still are in the driver's seat for as long as possible. And that means that the business has to be worth a couple hundred thousand if we're going to put a hundred thousand and still want to only have 20 percent. And while all of us who have great ideas think, I have a great idea, it's worth half a million, it's worth a million. Wrong. Unfortunately, there's lots of ideas. What is really the challenge is taking that idea to the prototype, to really creating it as a business and being able to exit. Because for us, we're putting our money, but at some point, either as the entrepreneur will buy us back, so it has to be a business that can generate enough cash to buy us back, or there will be someone who wants to acquire. So there goes the next big question, what types of businesses do we invest in? It's true that by and large, it's technology. Why technology? Because usually pretty quickly, either it works and it can really scale, or it doesn't work and you, you have nothing. What is much harder is the businesses that are service-oriented, people-oriented, or that the entrepreneur says, you know, I've always dreamt of having a little business, and I'll just have a couple of employees, uh, that is great, but it's hard to find investors like us, unless maybe it can become a franchise, or that indeed you will have as entrepreneurs, if you are an entrepreneur, be able to buy us back. Because the statistics say um, that out of 10 entrepreneurs, and right now there's no statistics that says by type of entrepreneur, usually four, we lose all of our money, so usually the, on, the business does not work out. Four, we get our, some money back and maybe a bit, and there's probably only two out of 10 who can make it and return. So therefore, we need businesses for that risk that probably can at least 
multiply in five or ten times the value year one in five years. So we need businesses that can scale. But we do, as I'm a perfect example of my um, investor network, Go Beyond, we have a whole range. So services can also be investable. But even us, usually we meet about 100 entrepreneurs before we make maybe five investments. The venture capitalists who are people who have a fund will take what we invest in and again only invest maybe out one or five out of a hundred. So it's a very small, but for those that for whom it makes sense, it's really fantastic. Um, just a few numbers. Uh, I don't know about Malta. I, it is my dream that Malta goes on the map of angel investing. Uh, we have done a number of, uh, of trials. We have not yet created a community of business angels. So I don't have data. I know it happens. I know family and friends, definitely people do know individuals in Malta, go and say, can you give me money? But that is all invisible. And as long as it's invisible, it's very hard to get entrepreneurs who don't have the connections to know where to go. It becomes very hard for us as investors. Usually we like to have a portfolio investments to know, well, who are we? How can we co-invest? Because it's too much for single investors usually to do that. Um, so the numbers in Europe have gone from 25,000 to 75,000. So that means in, in Malta, we could definitely be um, at least 1,000 individuals to a couple thousand who could do this. It has now become 3 billion euros a year invested in startups, more than what the funds or venture capitalists do. It easily could be uh, 10 billion. It is becoming the core source of driving the huge energy towards entrepreneurship in Europe that is existing. Uh, the banks are no longer here. Even funds are no longer here. We are really the ones, and that's becoming recognized at the OECD, at the G20, etc. Um, we are organizing networks most of the time, again, because that way we can share know-how, we can see deals together, and there's about 400 in Europe, still zero in Malta. I am ready, if anyone afterwards is interested, I'm happy to come invest in Malta. I know we have great entrepreneurs, and, um, and we can, you can find an international network, and, and that way the entrepreneurs here can get exposure internationally. And there's 400 of those networks around uh, Europe. Did I do, do I have a few more minutes? Okay. Um, the next thing is a little bit on, on the trends. I was so happy that the, you mentioned Kickstarter. Um, there's all sorts of trends to make it easier and easier for the entrepreneurs to find investors and for the investors to find entrepreneurs. Uh, Kickstarter is one where if you need the first 30,000 um, euros or so uh, for a business and you, you're doing a good, so you could give somebody afterwards a free service, you can even go online and start raising a bit of money. So the internet is starting to have a role in here. There's also governments. Um, around Europe and the world are becoming involved and are helping co-invest, often matching funds with business angels. So that's something very much. I've talked about impact investing and women, where only in Europe 3% of investors are women, and yet more than 50% in most countries of the new entrepreneurs are women. And many times women entrepreneurs create businesses that are not necessarily high-tech, that usually if you have women investors in a group, you're more likely to get investment to the women entrepreneurs. Finally, tips. Um, for those of you who are entrepreneurs, the first step is figuring out, is this the right kind of financing? How will this be? Because definitely we do become involved. We usually are on the board. Um, and from what I've just described, how many of you think you could be entrepreneurs who could probably benefit from angel investing? Because if there's investors in the room, at least we'll... So a few of you think you could benefit. Um, so the tip there is make sure you understand a little bit more about what you are. Think all the way through to a potential sale, what you will need at what time. Um, get educated on how we do the due diligence, how we negotiate, and, and make sure you also do due diligence on us. Many times I'm going to say, well, as long as there's money, that's great. No, we come in all sorts of shapes and forms, so make sure we are the right ones um, for you. How about investors? From what I've described, how many individuals here would say, 
well, I could be interested, or who are already business angels, even though you didn't maybe realize you were called that way. How many in the room? Okay, a few. So by the way, already you could connect, uh, start maybe discussions in, in, uh, at, the, at the break. For those of you who might say, I could be interested, um, it is something, while it's a hobby, we can lose it all, there are best practices. So the first thing is connecting yourself with individuals or groups that already know this about a bit. The second is make sure you start getting access to a number of entrepreneurs because they're all different and that's only once you start seeing a number of them as opposed to just meeting somebody at a cocktail saying or great I like you here's a check that's usually called family friends and fools uh, because you have no idea it's like buying a house you usually go see a couple it's exactly the same thing um, it's exactly the same thing for 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 investors so make sure you get to to see that and the best is Put a bit of money in, in a pool with some um, friends and start making two, three, three investments. Now, are any of you of here policy makers um, or in banks or maybe a few? So the tips I have is there, get Malta on the map of early stage investing. There is huge growth. We have at IBAN, I'm president of the European Trade Association for Early Stage Investors, Business Angel Seed Funds, eban.org. We have members of every European state. Malta was a member, is no longer a member. Um, get Malta back on the map. There's a lot of best practices. Um, it's very good to do things for the entrepreneurs, but one of the key learnings is if the policymakers are not also at the same time developing a community of investors, many of those ideas just go to waste because there's just no way that um, the entrepreneurs can finance it all and just the family and friends are not uh, enough. Secondly, do make it uh, easy for the investors to invest, and there's a lot of tax incentives in countries that get put. And I know Malta had thought about this before, maybe redig it, um, and I know I had worked with Deborah's brother on this, is co-investing. Most governments now um, do matching funds with business angels so that if there's a euro put in, they will put in a euro to support that entrepreneur. So I call my company Go Beyond, because I found that in anything that we do, especially going for a passion, the hardest step is saying, it shall be, I will take that step. So dare to go beyond. Entrepreneur, um, Malta has a huge core culture of entrepreneurship. We need now to make sure that we also develop the investing uh, community. Thank you very much.